Hello and welcome to Stage Front Salon. <laughs> Next is Change Data Capture with Debezium and without. We should see slides. All right, thank you all for coming. I'm Petrus Angelatos, I'm a software engineer at Materialize, <clears throat> and today I'm going to talk about how we handle change data capture um, in our database. Um, a few words about the Materialize database before we jump into it is that it is a SQL streaming database, meaning that it is able to consume um, external sources, external streaming sources of data. Uh, for example, Kafka, Topics, um, S3 monitoring, S3 buckets, um, and relevant to this talk, uh, external databases, um, and bring all this data in and allow you to write computations um, expressed as materialized views in SQL. And materialized will um, incrementally maintain those uh, views as the source data changes. Um, and it will do so efficiently and um, it can support arbitrary SQL statements, for example, multi-way joins, aggregations, and subqueries. Um, the, when it comes to consuming external databases, the two, uh, well, the first uh, most po popular option is to use the Bezium. And in fact, Materialize supports the Bezium. And I will talk briefly about the architecture, what the architecture looks like in this case. Um, and then we're going to jump into um, how and why we also support it directly going to Postgres. Um, so the Bezium is a Kafka Connect uh, plugin. Uh, and it is itself connecting to an upstream database. In this case, we're going to talk about Postgres. And um, it, it connects through the logical replication protocol. And its job is to uh, read that binary protocol, make sense of what's happening in the database, and publish the updates in one or more uh, Kafka topics that you see on the right. Um, the way it works is that uh, if you have a, an upstream database with n number of tables, you're going to get uh, in your Kafka um, installation one topic per table that you got that you, that you want to be replicating. And optionally, but uh, it's a crucial detail, you can also enable an additional topic called the consistency topic where the Bezium will uh, write enough metadata for you to be able to reconstruct the exact transaction history as it happened on the upstream system. Um, this is an important point to emphasize because Materialize, uh, the Materialize database is very particular about uh, correctness and being able to always uh, reflect results that are, um, the, are a computation of a state that actually existed in the upstream system. So for example, we never want to be able to uh, provide, let's say, an aggregation that has half the data of a transaction, but not the other half. Either one transaction must be present in the results um, in the whole or, or none at all. And so Materialize currently today um, supports reading from the consistency topic and any number of tables. It will do the right thing and reconstruct the, um, the history. Also, the tables that are, the topics that are populated for its table are going to be uh, are going to have exact at least one semantics, and so some amount of deduplication uh, must also be in place. Um, so I wanted to show this architecture and explain a bit what ha was happening in order to motivate the um, you know why why we went down the path of direct Postgres replication, and the reasoning is twofold. One is from the perspective of the, of the external user. Um, there are many companies that just have a simple Postgres or Postgres compatible installation and don't really have or either the know-how or the need for a Kafka cluster with Zookeeper and all that stuff. And so it is much simpler operationally for them to directly connect their database to um, materialize. And then on the implementation side, from our, our point of view, um, as I showed previously, in order to reconstruct the exact history with uh, these very cor um, high correctness guarantees, uh, we have to deduplicate correctly, recombine the data with the consistency topic. Um, doing all that by consuming a single stream that is well ordered uh, is a lot simpler, and so we have uh, we can have a, a much higher confidence on the correctness of the implementation. Um, so I talked a lot about the um, 
this concept of materialize um, needing to have the uh, correctness and always um, whole transactions. And the, um, there are really at the, at the deep core of materializers two concepts that we need to think about. Um, one is every single message is time stamped with, with, with a time. And importantly, the other kind of information that flows through the system is the, uh, the fact that all the messages for a particular time have been received. Um, and so what we actually want to do um, when we are consuming the uh, transactions from, from Postgres is that um, every single transaction must happen at exactly the same timestamp. Um, and then we must be certain that we have consumed the whole transaction. This um, may sound uh, simple, but it's a bit more tricky. And it was uh, one of the things that we had to think about how to, um, how to do. And for that, to, to explain that, uh, we have to think a bit about the write-ahead log that a Postgres database is maintaining internally. Um, so what I have here is a, uh, an example of, you can see on the left, an example of three interactive transactions that happen. The time flows from top to bottom. And um, I've made these three transactions start one after the other, first the green, then the blue, then the red. But they end in the reverse uh, order. And then in particular, the, the first transaction that commits, the first, the first transaction that ends commits, the blue one rollbacks, rolls back and the green one commits. So you have an inverse order of commit um, and also one of them that rolls back. Um, and while these interactive transactions are running in Postgres, every single statement that happens inside of this transaction gets immediately written on disk to the write ahead log. And the write ahead log is the way that uh, many databases are ensuring that your changes are durable um, and there is a background process that every now and then will take things out of the write ahead log and properly apply them to the uh, data structures and on disk data structures that uh, its database maintains. And so if we were just, if we were to look just in the write ahead log, you can see that even though the messages are totally ordered, like the uh, LSN, the log sequence number, is strictly increasing, um, there is an arbitrary, the, the, the events are arbitrarily interleaved. We cannot really make sense of you know, what happened first and what happened second. Um, and so in order to uh, make sense of this uh, write ahead log, uh, we rely on a decoding plugin. And fortunately for us, Postgres has, the, when we say logical, the logical replication of Postgres, the logical replication protocol of Postgres is actually a built-in decoding plugin and the job of the decoding plugin is to um, take the interleaved uh, um, sequence of messages from the write ahead log and produce a well formed log of transactions uh, in commit order. And this is what we get. Like the, the, the thing on the right is the thing we get when we actually connect to Postgres and request the replication protocol. Um, one thing you'll notice is that even though the decoding plugin has done its job and one has ordered the transactions in commit order with first the red one and then the green one, the and the blue one is missing. Um, it's still if you look at each individual message, the there there is not enough metadata to um, uh, select the correct timestamp. You can see the LSNs are all over the place, go to three to seven, then back to one, and then the transactions ID can also go backwards. Um, so in fact, what you what you have to do in order to ensure that all the events of a transaction happen at exactly the same time and they're ordered with respect to commit time, is that all the messages of a transaction must be timestamped um, with the LSN with with the LSN number of the commit message. And if you do that, in fact, you're going to be um, you're going to produce a totally a correctly ordered uh, stream of messages. Um, that maintains transaction boundaries. And this is what Materialize wants. Um, so we um, set out to implement that. Um, a big part of the implementation was part figuring out the, the replication protocol and what kind of LSN numbers we need to use. Uh, and then the other part was um, adding support for, the, for parsing the replication protocol, connecting through the special 
um, connection mode for that that is needed in the Rust uh, Postgres library, which uh, materializes written in Rust. Um, and the, this protocol is, for the most part, a binary protocol. Um, and you get these three, th three types of messages, inserts with the new data, updates with the old and the new, and delete messages, um, which on the, it, it looks very similar to what you get in a uh, Debezium message where you have the before and the after and some metadata. Um, it's just a bit easier to um, process if, you, if you're using the uh, Postgres replication stream. Um, so one thing I mentioned before is that uh, even though all the transactions are being written to the write ahead log, and there is a background process that um, garbage collects and applies the changes that are written there to the data structures of, of the database, uh, which means that for, for good reason, we don't want to keep an infinite history of changes on disk. Um, but now the question is, if we connect to a database that already exists, how do we, we, we cannot just start reading the latest transaction that happens to be on the, on the log. We have to actually um, get a snapshot of the data as it was at a particular um, LSN number, as if we applied all the um, items that, are in, that were in the wall, if we had kept it. And after we have that snapshot, we want to continue reading the replication stream at exactly that point with no gaps and without overlap. It has to be uh, at exactly the same point to avoid um, missing data in the one case and duplicate data uh, in the other case. Um, and so the, the main object that exists in Postgres to control the reclamation of write ahead log segments and also the uh, object that you use in order to consume a replication stream is called the, repl the replication slot which uh, upon creation, uh, Postgres will choose the LSN number that it will be based on, and it will always be an LSN number of a, uh, of a committed transaction. And what we actually want to do is uh, we, uh, we want to run a transaction um, and create the replication slot at the same time and set the transaction to run at the LSN, at the version of the database that existed at that LSN. And the SQL I'm showing here is more or less what you need to do. Uh, this, this special incantation will uh, put the transaction in, um, in, on, on the same version as the replication slot that got created. And now we have the opportunity to do a bulk copy of the data that existed before, just with a simple copy command. And then at the end of the uh, transaction, we are free to start the replication at, at any moment we like. Um, the moment the replication slot is created, it will ensure that all the wall segments on disk are going to stay on disk until we read them. And this is actually uh, an operational hazard. If you create a slot and you forget about it, um, it can happen that the, the, the disk is, uh, is, keeps accumulating um, data. Um, and so, Doing all that, um, we have the ability in Materialize to take a consistent snapshot um, and start replaying the slot. We, are, uh, we know exactly when to mark a particular LSN as ingested, and so uh, we send feedback messages back to um, a Postgres database in order to uh, not cause infinite uh, disk usage. Um, so, um, well, one thing I wanted to mention is that the uh, newer, newer Postgres databases also um, come with a very handy option, which is uh, limiting the number of uh, the size on disk that can be um, held back by any given replication slot. So that's uh, like a safety uh, feature. Um, okay, so this is looks uh, um, a lot. Uh, a lot like what uh, Debezium is doing, um, and that's how we connect directly. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that uh, this kind of um, snapshot and, and, and uh, streaming switch is the, I'd say, the, the simple way to do it. Um, I have included in my slides uh, that are not yet uploaded, but they will be. Um, I have included uh, a few 
extra reading material that I think is uh, pretty interesting. Uh, the two, the second and the third link um, are good reads. Debezium, apart from supporting this kind of snapshot and replication, also supports another kind of snapshot that is not, does not require a long running transaction that is gonna copy everything. Uh, which is called the incrementally, incremental snapshot. Uh, and the third link is the relevant paper that describes the method. It does require the system that is replicating the data to have write access and, and write signaling records. Uh, but if, you, if, you, um, if that's something that you can allow, then uh, it, it can produce a better, um, um, it can produce a snapshot step that can be um, paused and, and resumed without issue. Whereas in this one, if the transaction fails, you have to repeat it from the beginning. Um, also, I have the a link to the materialized guide that explains um, what I said in not so, no so much not so much technical detail, but from the operational um, aspect as well. What kind of objects do you need to create to in, in, in the Postgres database? And also the last two for anyone that wants to look into the uh, nitty gritty details the, uh, are the um, physical replication protocol uh, of Postgres and the logical one, which is a, a variation of the, of the physical one. Um, so that's all I had to say in this uh, short talk. Um, we have a booth at the booth area if you want to talk to us. Um, and I will leave some minutes for questions. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, we have a few minutes for questions. Yeah. Uh, th thanks for explaining all that. Uh, is there a reason um, that one might choose involving Debezium versus not? Are there like trade-offs between those two approaches? Well, when it comes to, if your intent is to consume the data in, in materialized specifically, then um, apart from the some features that are missing, for example, the incremental uh, snapshot that you can provide some benefits in, in the initial um, snapshot phase, I would say um, it doesn't make a lot of sense, uh, but having the data through Debezium allows other things to also use them from your Kafka. So I guess it depends if you, if your only use case is sending the data to materialize or it's just um, there for materialize plus other systems. Any more questions? All right, uh, thank you very much and see you at our booth. Thank you.